Our infrastructure help IT virtual event wrapped up earlier today. Actually, I guess that'd be yesterday. <laughs> we can't shatter the illusion of it being a Friday. Um, Welcome to Flywheel Fridays, keeping up with the federal IT news cycle, one conversation at a time. I'm Alexander Bolova, media producer for GovCIO Media and Research. With me today are my wonderful co-hosts, Melissa Harris and Kate Macri. Melissa and Kate, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Our Infrastructure Help IT virtual event wrapped up Thursday afternoon and we are here to go over some of the main takeaways and highlights from the event. Panels included digital solutions for better benefits and claims processes, health CIO roundtable, and a fireside chat on data and digitalization for future health. Let's start with that fireside chat. Melissa, what was discussed? So starting with the fireside chat at our event, we had the National Institutes of Health Associate Director for Data Science and Director of the Office of Data Science Strategy, Dr. Susan Gregaric, join us. Um, she's been leading um, strategic greater efforts around data infrastructure at NIH. She really set a good tone for the event, um, talking about the different data science ecosystem infrastructure that different institutes across NIH have how they've been experimenting with those different approaches, whether it's like a hub and spoke model, an interoperable federated approach. She provided some different examples of how that's sort of been working, hub and spoke approach. Um, a great example of that has been with Radix, which has been the rapid acceleration of diagnostics program for COVID-19 solutions at NIH, so that has like different branches like Radex Tech, um, Radex Up, all sorts of things like that. So there's a central sort of infrastructural piece, and then it spokes out to different elements so that you can have that kind of infrastructure that works well for that. Then when it comes to the federated kind of approach, they have a cloud platform interoperability program that enables new capabilities to be built out on demand. So you can see that based on these different approaches, there's no one size fits all for the way you build out a health data system. Um, I think that was a great example that she provided with you know, all of those different models. Let's continue the NIH thread by moving on to our Health CIO Roundtable, moderated by none other than Melissa Harris. Melissa, tell us about the Health CIO Roundtable. Sure thing, Alex. Uh, it was indeed a great conversation. With us were CIOs from different NIH institutes. So our government guests for the panel were Latanya Burden from NIAMS, and Mike Tartakovsky, who is the CIO of NIAD, both were really great guests and work with each other pretty well. And they expanded off of a lot of the topics that Susan Gregaric spoke on. So while Dr. Gregaric touched upon, you know, the different needs of each institute and center at NIH, we sort of got that on the ground perspective from each from each institute from them. So at NIAMS, uh, Latanya Burden was talking about how her organization is embarking on a five-year infrastructure modernization strategy um, that's lining up with the life cycle of their hardware. Uh, they're collaborating with intramural scientists on data storage needs and are really leveraging the strides collaboration that I touched upon before. When it comes to collaborating with Susan Gregaric's office, the data strategy office, she's found that very beneficial. and really taking advantage of the educational sessions and funding opportunities that they have. Over on the NIAD side, they really see that the data science strategy is enabling data science and biomedical research overall. When it comes to IT overall, Mike was also touching upon um, the piece that Susan was talking about in the fireside chat about making infrastructure proper for mission needs or scientific research. So 
one thing that really stood out to me was Mike said that IT is all about um, being an enabler and supporter of main mission at the organization. Um, these days, he said it looks like IT being an instrument of scientific mission and mentioning how everything that's happening in science is computational and how he's thinking about how new analytical tools can join with clinical informatics data from the patients in the clinical center and really transform the way that we think of biomedicine. So I thought that was a really interesting aspect that he had. Building off of Mike's comments, Latanya also said that, you know, while in many ways, like we think of change management as, you know, IT bringing in something new and trying to get everyone on board about it. She mentioned how in many cases, the scientists are coming to her organization with different pitches for things that would really help them out. And then it's the IT people trying to catch up. So there's really a two-way street here. She meets with um, people from the scientific and clinical trial side of her organization pretty regularly to make sure that they're sharing conversation about what they're doing, about funding. And so that constant communication and integration of IT and biomedical research and the different areas that IT can help um, was a really big piece of the conversation. A lot of the through line between these two sessions has been around making IT infrastructure and data strategy and infrastructure fit for specific biomedical research needs is really important. Even though NIH is one big agency, there are 27 institutes and centers under it and each of them, while they have the greater mission of driving biomedical research, all do different things in different areas, have different mission needs. So they do need different infrastructure for their data, for their researchers to help them out respectively. Our other panel centered around digital solutions for better benefits and claims processes. Kate, who participated in this panel and how are health agencies leveraging technologies to make healthcare easier to access? So this panel featured Ben Cushing, who's the chief architect of federal health for Red Hat, Dr. Mary Green, director of the Office of Burden Reduction in Health Informatics at CMS. And then the third panelist was Mishu Tasneem, who's the executive director of digital service at CMS. And she's kind of the ambassador from the U.S. digital service to CMS to help them digitize their processes and modernize IT to improve customer experience. So I think some of the big takeaways from this panel were that CMS is still really in the beginning stages of modernization. I mean, Tasmin said that they aren't even ready for AI, machine learning, natural language processing yet because they're still focusing on what she called renovating their current house, which I assume meant cloud infrastructure. So that was a really frank way of putting it, I thought, because I feel like federal agencies don't like to say when they're a little bit behind or haven't really done very much digitization or general IT modernization. But I think her bringing that up really helped propel the conversation forward because she talked about the things that they are working on, like streamlining technologies within the cloud and embracing APIs and microservices, which she said kind of go hand in hand and bringing business owners into where technology has gone. And I, th I feel like the overall theme at CMS right now is also something that she said. She said, we are slowly working our way to move business logic into the cloud so it's not just lift and shift. And I thought that was a really valuable perspective as well, because I think sometimes when when we talk about federal agencies modernizing their systems, we kind of talk about it in a way where it's just like we take everything we were doing via paper or like legacy infrastructure and literally just like pick it up and stick it in the cloud, except that's not really the way we do business anymore. And so at the root of this, I feel like CMS is kind of changing the way 
they fulfill the mission while also modernizing in the cloud. And I think those two things go hand in hand. I think that's true of all federal agencies. Like when you're moving to cloud infrastructure and you're modernizing technology to keep pace with 21st century demands, you're going to change how you do how you accomplish the mission a little bit. And I think that's a question that all federal agencies are facing. I just really appreciated the way CMS talked about it because it was very clear and honest. And it was, it was really like, this is what we're working on. This is where we're not at, but this is where we want to be at. And I think that's what made it such a really good conversation. Dr. Mary Green, talked a lot about how they're trying to reduce some of the burden around claims processing. So she said one of the hurdles that they're facing is convincing people that there is a problem with the way they process claims and getting to like a single source of truth like data standardization, which is also indicative of a lot of other federal agencies like DHS and DOD trying to get to a place where you have like a common data set that you're all pulling from and that all of your business partners are pulling from so that you're talking the same language. And when it comes to claims processing, Obviously, that's pretty important. So it's great that they're working on that. But I thought it was also interesting that she said, and she was also very frank too, she said a good portion of the claims process is handled by telephone and fax machines still, and it's 2022. <laughs> and she said they're trying to automate that more and focus more on system-to-system -system interaction, and all of those things require data standards and data interoperability. I mean, she said that when it comes to modernization, it's 20% technology and 80% getting the content right. And I think content there means the data. And I thought that was a really insightful comment as well. That's all for today's Flywheel Fridays. If you enjoyed this episode, keep the conversation turning by subscribing and leaving a review on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Alexander Bulova. I'm Melissa Harris. And I'm Kate Macri. Thank you for listening. Flywheel Fridays, along with GovCast, HealthCast, and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released weekly across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform and if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com. Does anybody listen after the credits? <laughs> <laughs>